Hello again, futurist furry therapist. So what I have today for you is a video talking specifically about a ventilator mode that is what I found to be uh, more specific to various institutions more so than area. It's not used in every hospital. It's available in every, but most hospitals typically have a tendency to go more standard mechanical ventilation being VC or SIMV, occasionally pressure control, sometimes bi-level or APRV, and then occasionally PRVC. And then occasionally you run across those facilities who the physicians say we're always using PRVC. Okay, and so this video is to help you understand PRVC. Now anytime you're talking about a ventilator mode of mechanical ventilation, you have got to first start by understanding what is set. Okay, and so when we talk about PRVC, we're going to first talk with what is set, and then we're going to talk about how the mode works. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump into it. The first thing you're going to set is obviously a respiratory rate. So this is your frequency. This will tell you how often each breath is going to be given in your patient that is not spontaneously breathing. Okay, to keep this simple, we're going to start by talking about the patient that is not triggering breaths above the set rate. So here you're going to set a respiratory rate that will tell the ventilator when to trigger a breath. Remember, trigger is your variable that initiates the inspiratory phase. Okay, trigger when a patient is not sp spontaneously breathing in PRVC and most other modes is typically set by your respiratory rate. Now the second thing you're going to set is going to be a target tidal volume. Okay, now I'm going to highlight this right here because this is key. We're going to deliver a target tidal volume. Okay, when you're talking about PRVC, you're talking about pressure regulated volume control. So you're going to try to control volume, but you're going to regulate it using pressure. Okay, and so it's going to make more sense when I get into it here in just a little bit. So you're always going to set a target tidal volume. This should be anywhere between six to eight mLs per kilo of ideal body weight. Okay. Now, after you set your target tidal volume, you're going to set the inspiratory time. Okay, so you're going to set eye time or some mechanical ventilators in PRVC have you set the I to E ratio. Either way, you're controlling the inspiratory phase. How long is that going to work? Now, this is going to be our cycle function. Okay, so the eye time is going to determine when the inspiratory phase ends. So respiratory rate determines when it begins. That's your trigger. Cycle is going to determine when the inspiratory phase ends. Okay, so that makes it your cycle. Okay, now you have to be careful with this because if you get into using too long of eye times, then you run the risk of air trapping. Okay, so we can obviously obtain better volumes with longer eye times when we're using pressure to regulate our volumes. But with longer eye times, you run the risk of air trapping. So be aware of that and don't let that creep in and be a problem for your patients. Your I to E, if you set your I to E, you're going to start somewhere around 1 to 2. That's normal. Um, that gives you twice as long of an expiratory phase than an inspiratory phase. And that is sufficient for most patients. Your obstructive lung diseases, your COPD, asthma, uh, bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, all of those may require longer E times compared to I times just to give them a little bit more time to get the air out. Okay, so after you set your respiratory rate, your target tidal volume and your I time, you're going to set your pressure. Now your pressure is going to vary. Okay, this isn't where you set pressure and it sits there every time, but what you have to understand is that in this mode, your upper pressure limit Okay, some of you may refer to this as your peak inspiratory pressure alarm, okay, is a setting in this mode because the ventilator is going to automatically adjust pressure up and down to achieve the target tidal volume. So how does it know when to stop going up? Well, the answer to that is, is when you set your peak high limit, setting, okay, your peak inspiratory pressure, high limit setting, your inspiratory pressure limit setting, whatever you call it on your ventilator. When you set that, what you're basically saying is, is while you're adjusting pressure, 
do not exceed this inspiratory pressure, okay? And PRVC will come within five centimeters of that peak inspiratory pressure. It won't go all the way up to it. So if you set it at 40 centimeters of water pressure, the vent will ramp up pressure to get to the target tidal volume up to 35 because it will stop moving up within when it reaches five centimeters of water pressure from peak inspiratory pressure alarm setting, okay, or your high pressure limit setting, okay, so that's important. Now, obviously, we set peak, we set FIO2, and we set a sensitivity. Those are your standard settings that just about go in every mode, okay? You're going to set an FIO2, you're going to set a PEEP, and you're going to set sensitivity in just about every mode you're talking about. But these first four up here are your key settings that you need to really understand what they do when you're in PRVC, okay? So now let's talk about how the mode works. And what I want to talk about is you have a ventilator here, okay? So this is your vent, okay? So this is your vent. And what I want you to think about when you're thinking about PRVC is imagine that there's a little respiratory therapist inside of the ventilator. Okay, so a little RT. Inside the ventilator. And that little RT is going to adjust flow every single breath to achieve the target tidal volume. Okay, now RTs know that if you increase flow, you increase pressure. And if you increase pressure, then you increase volume. If you decrease flow, then you decrease pressure, then volumes will go down. Okay, and that's the basis of this mode of mechanical ventilation. Is that the flow is going to vary to alter pressures, okay, to regulate pressures to achieve a set tidal volume. So what's gonna happen is this little ventilator here, this little RT inside this vent is going to give a breath, okay? And we're gonna, we're just gonna say it gives a breath here, right here, okay? Now, when it gives that breath, it measures the breath, and it measures that breath compared to our target tidal volume, okay? So let's just say our target tidal volume is, let's just say it's 400, okay? So our target tidal volume is 400. And let's say that that initial breath comes back at 250, okay? So when it gives the breath, it measures that breath, and then it compares it to the target tidal volume, okay? If it's greater than the target tidal volume, it will decrease pressure, okay on the next breath if it's less than the target tidal volume then it's going to increase pressure on the next breath okay now it increases or decreasing pressure by relying on your little RT within the ventilator that on the next breath if it needs to increase the pressure then that little RT is going to ramp up the flow and it's going to give greater levels of flow for the next breath okay if it needs to decrease the pressure, let's say on that first breath, the exhale tidal volume came back larger than the 400 we're shooting for, okay? Then on the next breath, the little RT in there is going to turn the, volume, the flow down, and that's going to result in a lower pressure, and that's going to result in a lower exhale tidal volume, okay? And that's going to get us closer to our 400. So after these breaths, are, the next breath comes... Okay, the RT, little RT, and I understand it's not a real RT, okay? Don't, don't take me for, for, for literally on this, okay? You understand, I'm just trying to put this in this simple terms for you, okay? You understand that the, the little RT inside the vent is going to increase the flow, which is going to increase the pressure for the next breath. That next breath is going to be compared to the target tidal volume. If it's greater than, it will increase the flow again and increase the pressure again. Okay, and it will keep increasing the pressure until it gets within five centimeters of your upper inspiratory pressure limit to achieve your target tidal volume. Okay, let's say your pressure is too low. Then the next breath, you're, you're going to have a decrease in flow. That's going to decrease the volume. 
and get you closer to that 400. And that will continue until that 400 is matched. When a breath is given that equals your target tidal volume, then the next breath will be given at the same flow, at the same pressure, with the same flow at the same pressure to achieve the same volume. And this goes on until you take them out of PRVC. The ventilator is literally adjusting every single breath to the previously exhaled breath. Okay, so if the previously exhaled breath, tidal volume is too low, then it's going to increase the pressure. It's going to do so by automatically adjusting flow. Increasing flow increases pressure, increases volume delivered, getting you closer to your target tidal volume. Okay, if the volume comes back too low, then your pressure is going to be decreased on the next breath. It's going to decrease by decreasing the variable flow, which will result in a lower tidal volume delivered until it achieves the tidal volume that is set, the target tidal volume that is set. And it will hold it there and deliver breaths at that setting and then mechanically ventilate your patient at your target tidal volume. Okay, if lung condition decreases and compliance goes down, then obviously, obviously volumes are going to go down, pressures will creep up. Okay, if lung compliance gets better and improves, then you'll see your peak inspiratory pressures going down because you need less pressure to achieve the same target tidal volume. Okay. So that's PRVC broken down. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have specific questions, okay, about PRVC and how it works. Now, before I let you go, I want to add this real quick. This is with a non-spontaneously breathing patient. From, this is just the base mode PRVC. Now, from here, you can go AC PRVC, which is assist control PRVC, or you can go SIMV PRVC. And in those modes, if you're in assist control PRVC, then you're going to see the patient triggers a breath, they're going to get that PRVC breath, which means this whole process is going to come into play. Now with SIMV, the machine gives a breath, the, the, uh, a mandatory breath, this whole algorithm comes into play, and the next breath will be adjusted as such. But if before that next breath is given, the patient wants a spontaneous breath, then the patient can truly take a true spontaneous breath and you can augment that with pressure support that's when you're in SIMV PRVC in AC PRVC all breaths will follow this algorithm based off the patient's desire to trigger more breaths okay hope this helps guys let me know and good luck